Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And uh, what I want to talk about today, since it is freshly, uh, freshly released in theaters, is John Wick's Bulletproof Suits. Um, I think that, you know, number one, it's kind of forefront in the mind and, you know, my channel could use the algorithm boost. <laughs> but besides that, you know, if you're at all a gun person and you think guns and suits, John Wick is right up there with James Bond anytime you think about somebody who is a well-dressed gunman. And so... I wanted to touch on, you know, my thoughts in terms of the feasibility of a bulletproof suit and, and some of these other factors. So I'm going to preface this by saying I am by no means an expert when it comes to ballistic armor. Most of the information that I'm drawing from here is from primary and secondary, and so I'm, a, I'm still a layman at that. As such, the technical details of ballistic protection, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can. If there's something that I'm just woefully incorrect about, please let me know in the comments. But I think I feel like I know enough to comment on how easily or not it would incorporate into traditional menswear. So that's what we're going to jump in on. Uh, when it comes to custom suiting, and that's the only way that you're going to do something like this, speaking of, this is my latest commission from Adam Ross Custom, and uh, I'll be doing a full in-depth video on this process coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, it's gonna be a little bit longer because I'm definitely gonna have to splice in a bunch of photos and, and uh, do a bit more editing than my normal single shots, but stay tuned for that. Two big, well, three big considerations that we have to take into account when we're looking at uh, John Wick's bulletproof suits. One of the big challenges, and one I think that they uh, addressed artfully, is with a traditional two-button jacket with the button closure, a lot of the important stuff up the middle is still exposed. And so, obviously, this doesn't give you the same type of coverage as a traditional uh, bulletproof vest would. Now, speaking of vests, I don't know if this was purely an aesthetic choice or something that they actually factored in you know, from a, a, a ballistic standpoint, but the fact that John Wick is wearing a very high, like six button uh, waistcoat, it comes, the closure comes almost up to his clavicle. So if you combine those two, then that would give him, uh, I guess, more sufficient ballistic protection. So I'm not going to say that that's really a problem. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that and say that the, the combination of those two is an intentional choice for that reason. The challenges really are, as I understand it, with soft armor, and if you're talking about incorporating uh, ballistic protection into something like a suit jacket, it's going to have to be soft armor. There's no practical way to work plates into this equation. So with soft armor, my understanding is that the reason why those vests fit the way that they do is that in order to be uh, the most effective, they really have to be worn snug to the body so that that way it is the, the, the ballistic material inside that is absorbing the entirety of the impact and not kind of swinging into the body first, which would, you know, it, it, you're not going to be penetrated by the bullet, but that's still going to suck. Um, I don't know how much additional trauma that would cause, but even with a, a buttoned jacket, the only thing that's really holding it in place is it, ha you know, the hanging off of the shoulders. And so there's, I feel like a little bit more give in the body of something like this. And so I would expect that the blunt force trauma experienced wearing a bulletproof jacket is going to be greater than it would be with a purpose-built ballistic vest. The other reason why I feel like that's going to be a big factor is because you're going to have to put the ballistic paneling in between the, the display fabric and the liner, and there's not a whole lot of room. And I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. So what I've got here is one of my old jackets. This is just a, it's a Oscar de la Renta, you know, nothing I'm not cutting open like one of my Italian <laughs> jackets for you guys, but uh, this is still going to give us the necessary anatomy of what we're looking at. So you've got, you can see the liner in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this 
inside out. So we can kind of see. Got the shoulder padding up here. And let's cut into this guy. So what we're gonna do, gotta make sure I'm not gonna slice myself open doing this. All right, that should get us where we need to be. So here's the liner. You've got the lapel right here. And as I tear the liner open, we have the exposed canvassing. And the canvassing is in a traditional suit, what allows it to form and fit to the body. And um, it kind of floats in between the two. This is a decently made jacket because the, uh, the canvassing is stitched in place and not glued, which I'm gonna do a video on that, but mainly one of the big reasons that guys think that jackets are uncomfortable is because they're buying something where all this material is glued together. But I want you to take a look. I mean, this is a single kind of fairly sheer piece of fabric. And so this is where the ballistic paneling would go into a garment. And so um, there's not really a whole lot of room here, even at its thickest point. Um, I've got a pair of calipers around here, but it can't be more than a couple of millimeters thick. And that's really the, the biggest challenge is working ballistic uh, protection into something like this without it turning into something that looks like a ski jacket. So now the movies require a certain suspension of belief. And so let's operate under the assumption that they have access to the most current technology, cutting edge ballistic armor. Um, it is theoretically possible to take that ballistic paneling and replace the canvassing with it. So essentially when the jacket is closed, all of this essentially to about, about the bottom of the rib cage would be covered by, you know, probably some type of level three-ish protection. And so it's one of those that uh, what I really do appreciate is uh, I'll link to the video um, and I'm blanking on the channel's name at the moment, but I'll link to it down in the description. These guys did like a year long project. The video is like a half hour, but well worth the watch. And they brought in a tailor. They brought in an actual armor manufacturer and they were able to manufacture a bulletproof suit in the same vein of John Wick. And the end result was surprisingly impressive. Um, so like I said, I'll link to that so you can check it out when you're done watching this. So I say all that to say that conceptually this is possible. And when I was at the NRA show last year, I was talking to an armorer, excuse me, a, a, an armor booth who was present. And they were talking about some of the considerations where when they are trying to do more low visibility and more discrete armor, that's something that factors into the design element is generally layering multiple pieces. So the wearer might actually be wearing a very thin level two conventional vest and then under that they might be wear or over that rather they might be wearing something like a waistcoat or a jacket and so you then get these layers upon layers that cumulatively will give you a similar effect and i just thought that was really interesting because at its core you know we all just kind of accept okay you know this this guild of assassins um is going to have stuff that doesn't necessarily exist in the real world but it can and I just thought that was kind of cool. So, you know, I really appreciate that uh, when you factor in the construction of a traditional jacket, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Now, it would be exorbitantly expensive. And the other factor is, is that um, there's no real good way to clean it. <laughs> so you're basically making these multi-thousand dollar disposable suits. But you know, when you've got the, uh, when you've got the resources that the, the Guild of Assassins does, that's not necessarily the biggest concern. So what do you guys think? I mean, you know, I, 
which was your favorite John Wick movie? Let's, let's hear that. I haven't seen the fourth one yet, and I need to. So uh, no spoilers in the comments yet. But aside from that, you know, is this, would you wear a bulletproof suit? You know, is that a concept that interests you? Aside from that, like I said, I wanted to have some fun with this one. And uh, hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.